Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impact your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, P.O. Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703 036359, 0703 768119. Email address lsmedia at or visit our website at www.livingseed.org. Let us sit back and listen as the servant of God brings forth the word of life. One, a disciple is first and foremost one who has been born again. Except a man is born anew by the Spirit, he has no potentials to become like Jesus. Even if all the principles of discipleship are applied, a sinner cannot develop by training to become a saint. He has to be born again. John chapter 3 verse 1 to 7 First Corinthians chapter 2 verse 13 to 15 Matthew chapter 11 verse 28 Titus chapter 3 verse 5 and First John chapter 3 verse 5 to 10 those that are reading for us. John 3, 1, 7. Who? Yes, let's take our sister there. John 3, 1, 7. Who is going to take 1 Corinthians 2, 13 to 15? Yes, the brother here. Okay, mom, yes. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Verse 3. Jesus answered him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Verse 4, Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Verse 6. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Verse 7. Marvel not that I said unto thee, we must be born again. Thank you. First Corinthians, First Corinthians chapter 2 verse 13 This is what we speak not in words taught us by human wisdom but in words taught by the spirit expressing spiritual truth in spiritual words The man without the spirit does not accept the things that come from the spirit of God for they are foolishness to him and he cannot understand them because they are spiritually discerned. The spiritual man makes judgment about all things, but he himself is not subject to any man's judgment. Matthew 11:28. Yes, notly. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden 
and I will give you rest. Titus 3 5. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins. And in him is no sin. Whosoever abided in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous even as he is righteous. He that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the work of the devil. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin, for his seed remains in him. And he cannot say because he is born of God. In this, the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Whosoever dwells not righteousness, righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth God. read several passages so <clears throat> is there any scripture that is striking you from what we have read I want to make a, a contribution to our study yes uh, Bumi in first Corinthians I understand that a natural just gone the natural man cannot comprehend the things of the spirit. Mm. Their foolishness to him. Mm. So in that context, a, a disciple must be born, a born again person. All right. All right. All right. Thank you for that comment. Yes, any other insights that you have got? We are looking at who can be a disciple. And our sister has noted that because the natural man cannot actually receive the things of the spirit, it's foolishness to him. No matter how you explain it, he cannot get it. Because spiritual things are only spiritually discerned. So, if the things of the spirit is what we need to impart to him and it can only be discerned by the spirit it means a man who is not born of the spirit cannot even be considered for discipleship at all yes any other comment you want to say something ma'am all right <coughs> any other comment yes do me I am a church leader, but if I am not born again, the things of God will just be something that will not do anything to my own life unless I am born again. Right. Okay. I'm noting that unless a man is born again, uh, Nicodemus was a ruler, he was a ruler of the synagogue, and yet the issue is that the things of the kingdom you can't see it. So, a man who is not born again is blind. Are you understanding? He's blind. He may be educated, but he's blind. So, he can't even see the things of the kingdom. He can't see the kingdom. 
talk less of entering into it. So the first thing we are noting there is that activities like this man had been fasting and praying, he had been reading, he had been leading synagogue worship. But because of the life that he carries, which is the natural life, the old man, it cannot in any way see the things of God, talk less of understand it. It can't enter into it. So even if you sit down with somebody for years and you are trying to train him, it's like training a lizard to become a dog. Will it happen? Why not? Because that which is born of a lizard is a lizard. And that which is born of a dog is dog. Marvel not that I say unto you, you must be born again. Right? Any other point? We are still looking at who can be a disciple from the passages we have read. I discovered, I discovered that for somebody to have the knowledge of God, like Nicodemus, he said, nobody can do what you are doing except God is with you. Yes. But Jesus said, you need to be born again. Okay. All right. So now we are, we are now again noting that it's even possible to acknowledge God, to have the knowledge. And say, ah, nobody can do this kind of thing except God is with him. You can even commend God. You can even be one of those who admire God. But admiring God, acknowledging God, speaking about the great works of God, does not change the man who you are inside. Is that okay? And so, Let's quickly spend a bit of time looking at what that means. Because maybe one of the reasons that make conformity to Christ uh, very difficult, it may simply be because of this basic issue. Are you understanding? If the life that you carry is the life of the natural. So Jesus Christ was confronting Nicodemus and he says, let me not deceive you. That which is born of the flesh is what? Is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Now, from that two statement, what does that mean? It implies that these are two species of life that they don't mix. They don't join. If something is born of the flesh, no matter how you try, it cannot become of the spirit. Do you understand that now? So, discipleship is not an effort of growing the flesh into the spirit. Do you understand what we are saying now? Discipleship is not a process of trying to panabit the flesh until it takes the shape of the spirit. No. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And we continue to be what? To be flesh. It can be educated, it can be exposed, it can be trained, it can be given good skills, it can even be trained to preach. Are you understanding? It can even be given all the concordance and taught how to use the Greek language, the Hebrew language, the Aramaic, and all the languages of the Bible, the ancient languages, to be a proficient 
Bible explanator or what you call expositor. Eh? But that which is born of the flesh is flesh. So it is possible to even have a very knowledgeable man on the pulpit doing his best like Nicodemus was doing. And he will still be what? Why? Because he was born of the flesh. So the Lord Jesus was very definite about it. He said, unless and excuse me, what's the meaning of the word unless? Yes, except. What's the meaning of except? <laughs> Without which. So now, when he used the word unless, that is an indispensable precondition. That is something that you cannot do without. That there is no where you are going unless this has taken place. Is that okay? Now, so he said, unless a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. He cannot. Now, when he used the word, he cannot. What's the meaning of cannot? No matter how much you try, it will not happen. So I want you to take two words in that scripture that is very important. Unless, cannot. These are very strong words that there's no two way about it. And we don't need to beg that question. The reality is that unless a man be born again, he cannot. And you know, in Romans chapter 8, I think verse 8, verse 7 and 8, he said, so then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Can somebody help us quickly to read Romans 8 and 8 to, I mean 7 to 8. Romans 8, 7 and 8. Because the mind is enmity against God. Uh-huh. Did you see that now? So he said the natural man, the natural man, the one that is born of the flesh, is an enemy of God. Is that okay? So no matter what you try, he cannot please God. He doesn't have the capacity to do so. So if a man is carrying the natural life or the old life, the life that was born when we were born by our parents, are we together now? No matter how you try, that life cannot please God because it is born to oppose God. That's why before discipleship can progress with anybody, are we together? The first thing we have to ensure is that he is a new creation. Do you understand that now? Now, if he is not a new creation, discipleship cannot start with him at all. So even when we meet people that are eager, we want to join discipleship, what is the first prerequisite before we can see them into discipleship? They must be born again. Now, please listen. Now, because that word, it must be born again, has been used many times. To the extent that you meet people who say, I'm born again, I'm born again. To the point that the essence of what it means to be born again is not clear again. There's need to explain that. There's need to understand what exactly does he mean to be born again? 
who we like to give us an insight. Prof, you want to help us? What does it really mean to be born again? Because now we are, we are coming to the critical point. We must not presume that we are doing discipleship with someone who is carrying the natural life that no matter how you try, even after about five years, one of these days, it will just turn up to misbehave and oppose God. And you say, Kai, we have been trying. Now this person has been in discipleship for 10, 5 years and he's not making any progress. Maybe you are the one who is not making progress. Because you are trying. You are trying to make a goat to become a cow. And when the goat has tried and tried and tried and tried to become a cow, he simply just spoke out and said, look, I'm a goat. <laughs> Leave me alone. I'm a goat. <laughs> Why are you making me doing what I'm not meant to be? So he goes back to misbehave. He goes back to do the things that goats normally do. You are the one who is not serious. You are the one who is doing a wrong thing. Anybody who is discipling someone who is not born again, he is the one who is doing the wrong thing. So, can you help us now? What does it mean from the scriptures we have been reading to be born again? How do we know it? To be born again, it means there must be a brand new life. A life that has never, ever, ever existed before. Uh, coming into uh, existence. So, uh, to be born again is not an improvement of the old life. Eh? You mean it's not an improvement of an old life? Now, let's imagine that this man carrying the old life used to drink. And he used to chase after women. And we are able to help him to stop drinking. And we have been able to also help him to reduce the number of women he goes with. <laughs> or even to stop by making sure all the women that used to run after are not available to him again. <laughs> now, are we going to say he is born again? Why not? Yes, Luvoyo. Okay. And, and that life must terminate. Okay. And then when that life terminates, only then the new life can come. Hmm. Because the, the verse we have just uh, uh, read there, in the, in the Amplified Version, it says that life is hostile to God. Hmm. So even if it, it can behave while we are here at Sondela, then it gets an opportunity to show its, its character what it is. Yes. Hostile hostile to God. Okay. So, now we are noting now, please, please get this clear because now, if we don't state the gospel properly and we start building on a faulty foundation, we may never progress with what we are dealing with. Now, so, to be born again is not just an improvement of the old life. It is not even a reduction of the excesses of the old life. Are we trying to say that? It is not a purge. It's not that we just purge the old life and we repaint it. It's not a repainting of the old life. Eh? Not it's not a trimming of the old life. I said, look, you are two XX. Let's cut a bit. No. It is what? A complete replacement of the old life that used to be there. I don't know whether we are communicating this very well. What must it be? It must be a replacement, a complete replacement of what used to be there. And 
this replacement because if it's a replacement no servant can serve two masters it is not possible for two kind of lives to stay to co-inhabit one container because these two lives they are no friends so they can't share the same room is that alright? ok so before the new life can come in what exactly are we saying to the old one? eh? that one has to die hey, are we getting confused? so that old life has to terminate has to go it has to die so when, when Jesus was telling Nicodemus you must be born again what is he actually saying? he said you were born before but you were not born correct do you understand that now? you have to be what? you have to be born again again you know the one you were born by your mother is what is not correct educated well trained but what not correct did you understand what I was saying but it was useful it used to do some few things it can even sing it has composed songs before it can worship. Nicodemus was actually a ruler of the synagogue. Are you getting what I'm talking about now? And Jesus did not accuse Nicodemus of fornication. He was actually a straightforward man. Are you getting me? Who is even sincere? To come to ask and say we know you are a man from God but so let me let's ask a question what was wrong with Nicodemus eh it was the life he carries it's not his face it was not first the activities his action was not what made him wrong what makes him wrong is the life he carries. So excuse me, when we say somebody is to be born again, let's, let's take note of this. It is not because he is drinking or smoking that we are saying you are not correct. Even if he is not smoking or drinking or womanizing, even if he is a moralist, Will he still need to be born again? Yes. Why? Because the life that he carries, that which is born of the flesh, is flesh. Are we together now? So, let's quickly note, and it's very important here, that when Jesus was asking those brothers and say follow me I will make you were they not made before eh so what does he mean when he says I will make you what it means is that what you are is not good we are going to discard who you are and what you are for you to be made again. Are we getting the point here? So before a man can actually step into discipleship, something must be replaced in his life. I hope you heard me. What is that something that must be replaced in his life? Eh? that life you see so you see when I say something must be replaced in his life I thought all of you would have had me I said no 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 it's not something it is the life it's not something in his life that must be replaced what must be replaced 
is the life itself. The life itself. So if he has grown for 50 years, what happened to all the 50 years of growth and achievement and attainment? Eh? Eh? Discarded. Discarded. So that we can be able to say, if any man be in Christ, is a new creation. It's a brand new person. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. All. Not some things, not many things. Now, but may we take it a little further before we leave room if there are questions. Because we are going to have to ask. We cannot presume to say you are already in discipleship if what you are carrying along is the old life. You have always been whom you have always been. You have always been the religious person that you have always been. And this is just an addition. Mm -mm. If it is not a, a, a replacement of the life you carried before, mm -mm. the journey has not started. Are we together? Okay. So let's quickly check through the scriptures that we've read that could give us insight. Uh, for John chapter 3 we have already noted that the reason why you should not marvel Jesus actually told him, marvel not because this thing is a big matter it's a big matter you know that Nicodemus understood what Jesus said when Jesus said you must be born again the man said how can I after I am old how can I be born again you remember he was asking such a question. Am I going to enter my mother's womb? Did you understand the meaning now? The man is saying, so what you mean is that this 50 year old man that I have been is not good. It means <laughs> the process of conception has to start again then you know the only mistake he made was thinking that it would still be his mother's womb. Do you understand that now? No. This new one will not come from your mother's womb. Are we together? The one that came from your mother's womb is what? Is flesh and is not good. So he says these ones that are born not of the will of man nor of the will of the flesh but of the will of God the womb that you are going to be coming from this time now is not your mother's womb it will be God's own womb the spirit are we together now but all we are saying is that something has to finish for another one to start are we together to that point? Okay. Now, but in 1 John chapter 3, it became a little more clear. Let's quickly check 1 John chapter 3, which our brother read to us. Let's quickly check that up. <clears throat> Are we there? In verse 5, it said, And you know, that it was manifested to take away our sins. And in him, inside him, in Christ Jesus, there is what? There is no sin. Now, let's listen now. Because these are, we are coming to a point. Whosoever abides in him, sineth not. Whosoever seen it has not seen him, neither known him. Are we together now? 
And he said, let no man deceive you, little children. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that commits sin is what? Is what? Is of the devil. For the devil sins from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God does not do what? Does not commit sin for one reason. What is the reason? Because he's praying hard. Eh? Because he's fasting. Why? Because the seed the nature of God remains in him and he cannot sin because he is born of God. So, now, we are not noting. Why, can, why does he not sin? Who remembers why does he not sin? It's because he is born of God. That is his own nature. Hi, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Are we getting what we are talking about now? So, the question that settles the question now is we know that that which is born of God by nature does not sin. That which commits sin is of the devil. We know that now. Okay. So if we want, in case somebody is saying, I'm not sure whether, let nobody tell me that I'm not born again, I'm born again. There's no quarrel. We can check it out. How do we check it out now? It is this question of sin. Because the Bible says, in this, did you notice that it said, in this, not in this, Many people used to look for many. They say he's a Christian because he sings. He's a Christian because he's come for fellowship. He's a Christian because of that. No, 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 no. Those are not the things. Are you hearing me? That distinguishes the one that has this new life and the one that has the old life. Do you understand now? What is it that distinguishes it? It's one matter. He that is committing sin is of the devil. He that is born of God does not continue to sin because he is born of God. You know, when I read the Bible and he said, because he is born of God, I say, so, he, so it means that if we, there's an animal that eats meat, what is that animal? Eh? A lion. Can eat meat. Even a cat. I think a cat eat meat. Dog eat meat. Now let's imagine that you bring meat and you put cat near meat. What does he do? Why? Because it's a cat that eats meat. Is that okay? Now, let's say we bring meat. And here's a goat that is very hungry. It's very, very hungry. And here is meat. What will, what, what will the goat do? Eh? Is it because he's not hungry? He's angry. And here is food. It's not its own food. Why? Eh? Because by nature, he doesn't eat meat. Do, do you understand that now? So that's the matter. The first life, the natural life, by its own nature, what does it do? 
it sins. And if you deny him from sinning, you are making him to fast. Do, do you understand that now? You are only punishing him. Even if he stays away from sinning for two days, because you did not give him opportunity to sin, at any moment he finds opportunity, what does he do? He will sin. It is his nature. Please listen to me. It is not first temptation that makes the natural man to sin. Oh my God. Am I confusing you? Eh? What makes the natural man to sin? It's because it's nature. So listen. If temptation comes to the natural man, what do you think the temptation is simply doing to the natural man? It's only encouraging that which is in him to come out. Oh my God. Eh? Is it possible to tempt a goat with meat? Why not? Eh? Because you don't tempt him with that. So let me inform you now. Temptation is only a confirmation of what is in you. I've now I've confused you a bit. So when you see when you see yourself going to see, please listen to me now. It is a simple matter. And what is the matter? The sinner is where? It's inside. So you know the Bible says, let nobody say, when he's tempted, I'm tempted of God. What did he say? He said, every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lusts. You can only be tempted with what is inside of you. My God. Are we together? So, the question we are going to be asking here, I hear someone say, well, he's the people that provoke me to, 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 to get annoyed. They, they provoke me to, no. I hope you know that provocation is not wrong. What's the meaning of to provoke? It's just to stir up what is inside. If there's nothing inside, what can they provoke? So let's imagine that it is the new life that is inside. When somebody comes to provoke you, what will come out? It's the new life that is inside. Are we getting the point now? So let's ask the question right now. What life do you carry? Even if because of religious activity we have so much put a cat in a cage because we, want, we are drying our meat. You know sometimes when you are drying meat in the village eh? you dry your meat outside because you don't have a, a oven that time. We dry our meat in the village. We put salt and put it under the open sun. But there's a cat in the house. So what do you do to the cat? Eh? You cage it 
so that your meat can be dried. <laughs> Am I right? And anytime you want to release the cat, what do you do quickly with your meat? You quickly <laughs> pack your meat. <laughs> so this is the matter. Could it be that some of us have not eaten meat because we were caged? You remember how brother David said uh, when they were asking and said well we cannot serve this holy bread to common men because we don't have a common bread here. He said at least if you have kept yourself away from women. Now did you understand the answer that David gave the man? The, woman, the man said actually your servants, their vessels have been sanctified for the past three days because women have been kept away <laughs> from us. <laughs> did you, did you, <laughs> are you understanding that? <laughs> he said, it's not that we kept ourselves away. <laughs> they are kept from us. So in a way, we are sanctified. So... <laughs> Now, now, let's ask a very deep question here. The fact that the cat has been caged, so our meat appears to be safe. It appears to be safe. So sometimes you meet disciples, you say, ah, you know this brother, he has been doing well and since he had been in our midst, he has never misbehaved. Why is it that when he just went to Malanga, that uh, something happened? Maybe the sisters there are so loose. Excuse me. Excuse me. What is the real situation here? Yes. Uh -huh. is the cat that has been encaged. So now that he is out of cage, he is only doing what he should have been doing while he was here. So now let's ask this question. Are you born again? Such that if you are taking, supposing the cat, inside cat, was removed and a goat is put inside and you now throw it, throw that goat in the midst of meat, even though he is hungry and he needs to eat, what will happen to the meat? The meat is safe. What has saved the meat? Eh? It's because the animal inside has been changed. Now listen. I'm hearing some of you. You want the world to change. So that you can be a Christian. Did you see now? We want the whole world to do what? To change, to be normal so that we can be a Christian. Did you see where the problem is? Did you see why many of us we are only Christian when we are in a cage? Do <laughs> you get me? We are, we are gentle, we are we are holy within here. Within here. If you get home now and your husband just misbehave, what happens? <laughs> talk to me, talk to me. 
Because it's important. What will happen now? Something jump out. Say, ah, you think I'm <laughs> you think I'm not there? No way, you can't do that. Is it because I'm trying to be a Christian? You say that. So we must ask this question right now. So when Jesus was confronting Nicodemus, the question Jesus was dealing with is not environmental. He's dealing with the man inside. So can we ask this question? You know, and let me tell you. If Jesus will not just respect Nicodemus for his position, and said, verily, verily, I say to you. You have been trying, you have been fasting, you have been working hard. But the matter is not about that. Is that what was you, the one that was born, was no good. You've got to be born again. Don't be surprised. That's what you have to do. And Nicodemus knew. He said, so how can this thing be? It was his question that Jesus began to answer from that John chapter 3 from verse 9 that made Jesus to start talking about the son of man must be lifted as serpent lifted his, I mean as Moses lifted the serpent in the wilderness. Now if we say ah, you have been with us for this long time. How can we say they are not born again? We may be respecting your age. May be respecting your association with us. May be respecting your position. We may be respecting your, your caliber. But we know you are not helped. Because you wonder why you struggle. You wonder why the life we have been describing is not easy for you. Honestly speaking, it is not easy for cat to see rat. Do you know that if if cat is sleeping and rat passes <laughs> even though cat is tired and he needed this sleep so much what happens? Something jumps inside of him because a little smell from rat wake something in cat and say ah I'm telling you it's not easy for cat to be domesticated and not to eat meat and I want to inform you that discipleship is not a domestication of cat Do you understand that now? It can only be a growing, a training of a right species of life. So let me be asking a question. Are you a new creation man? Our understanding of discipleship, that's where it begins from. You see, somebody may have grown even to become a pastor, senior pastor, but you still see the character of the flesh inside of him. The truth is that they don't want us to say it, but the truth is that they are not born again. It may look very harsh, but if we are following the word of God very well, you will see and say, Whosoever is committing sin has not seen him. He does not know him. And yet you see somebody say, well, does he mean that? Uh, does he mean that? Does he mean that? What do you want to say? What do you want to say? 
let's face the fact. The fact that maybe we were not taught that made us to think that, well, I've been born again. It's just that that's how we will struggle until we get to heaven. You will notice that that thing is not Bible. Especially when you keep reading from the word of God over and over and over and over again. And you go to Titus, you go to John, you go to First John. You see Jesus say, whosoever is committing sin is a slave of sin. And you know that a slave does not abide in the house forever. Did you understand that now? So, can I ask you? Do you remember now in the book of Romans, it said, to whomsoever you yield your body, you are the slave of that person. Is that okay? Alright. So, which means, there are some slaves that are in the house for some time. But Jesus said, they are not, they are not going to be in the house forever. A time is coming when all slaves, all servants of Mr. Flesh will be evacuated from us. Oh my God, I don't know whether I'm confusing somebody here. Am I confusing somebody in this meeting? Now listen again. You see, the complication, the complication is that the good seed was sown. The tear was sown. And they are both growing. And you are thinking, let's separate those that are that are tears. And the master said, leave them. Let them be growing together. When the time comes, we will take away the tear. So, listen. But why the tear and the correct seed are growing together? Are they enjoying the same rain? They are enjoying the same sunshine? They are enjoying the blessedness of the Father? That may be the biggest problem that some of us have. Some of you may be slaves, but in the house. When we pray for rain, rain comes, you are blessed. When we ask for provision, provision comes, you are blessed. And that makes you to feel that well, I'm, if I'm not alright, why am I getting the same blessing? Why am I getting promoted? Why am I getting healed? Why am I getting all of this? The master say, leave them. But what is the matter? When the time of fruit came, the tear produced its own fruit. That's the challenge. Whenever the time of testing came, what you are usually come out. If there's a little matter here now, very, a very little issue, there's a little issue here, a little provocation. Who you are will just come out. You will just see yourself asserting who you are inside. So, let's ask a very quick question. And if you are not sure, a uh, prof, is it a crime if we taught people are all right and we discover that they are not all right. Is it a crime for us to settle down and make sure that they are all right? Eh? It's a, it's a, it's a privilege. Okay. <clears throat> you know when I started doing learning computer, it is not this time that new laptop and new software came that helps you to save your work automatically. 
You know this time, your work is saved automatically. But in those days when we started, I think I was using uh, 386 in those days. One, two, something. Oh my God. And then when you finish typing and working, and you know my typing was not very fast. When I've typed and I've done a lot. And when you are about to close, something will come and say, do you want to save changes to this file? Then I say, no, but I saved it before now. I saved it before. So I would just say no. <laughs> Once I click no, what has happened to everything I have done? Everything is finished. Ah! So when I go back again and open my file, I will start. And I discover that all the things I have done for a whole day is finished. I say, what happened? Then somebody was careful enough to say, when you were closing the other time, did he not ask you, do you want to save <laughs> changes that you have made to this file? I said, he said, what did you click? I said, no. Uh. <laughs> he said, no, you should have clicked yes. So I said, okay. Any time, any time I open a file, are you hearing me? Whether I made any change or not, <laughs> If he said, do you want to save changes that you have made to this file? What do I say? I say, yes. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, listen. If I'm not sure it is safe, what do I do? Save it again. There's no need to hang on an historical salvation that has no evidence. There's no need to keep saying, I know I'm born again, I know I'm born again, but what we are seeing in you, the manifestation that is coming out of you shows that you have never seen him or known him. The thing that is coming out of your life is showing that you are still presently of the devil. What is that salvation that you are hanging on? Some of you say, you know, in 1970, uh, when uh, Billy Graham came to, to East London, I remember I raised my hand. But ever since you have been a womanizer, ever since you have been, you have been deceiving your wife, there are issues that you have never opened up. And you know it's a lie. Anytime the, uh, there's that girl that you deliver in the village, anytime the girl comes, oh, that's my sister. But it's your daughter. And the Bible says all liars will have their part in the lake of fire. So what kind of born again did you have in 1970 that did not change you from being a liar? I suggest to you, save that life again. I suggest to you. Don't just say, well, we have been in this thing. I'm a pastor. How can me, a whole pastor, go to, to Umtata only to be saved? Ah. Brother, we are not talking about nomenclature, big name, big dress. That's not the issue. Jesus looked at that highly respected Nicodemus. He was one of the top religious leaders in the land. When they are looking for the top ten of the St. Andrew Council, Nicodemus was sitting on that. They were the interpreters of the scriptures. And Jesus looked at him and said, let me not deceive you. You must be born again. Because the, to be born again is a replacement of your natural life. It's a replacement. And I must tell you that Mr. Flesh that has to be replaced, are you hearing me? 
does not always manifest in the same way in everybody. There are some of you that your own natural man is gentle. Are you getting me? You are gentle since you were born. And I know the reason why you appear gentle is that you don't have confidence in yourself and you don't like to make mistakes so that nobody will ridicule you. Do you understand that now? So when you come to a meeting, what did you do? You kept quiet. You said, I don't want anybody to laugh at me because I cannot speak English. So instead of uh, speaking and making anybody to laugh at me, what does it take to be quiet? So when you see that sister quiet, what is she defending? Eh? Is defending Mr. Flesh. Eh? Yes. There's that man inside that say, mm -mm, I don't want, don't want that kind of confusion. I don't want people to take me for granted. So it keeps going. And yet, there are some of you that your own Mr. Flesh cannot keep quiet anywhere. Wherever you go, you must be known. And if they don't recognize you, something inside of you is, is, is doing like this. It's doing like this. I say, who, who do they think they are? So for every slightest opportunity, you, let, you put up your hand and say, yes, I have something to say. Is that same man But you see, for another person, that man inside, his own is that anywhere he goes, anywhere he goes, he's looking for prestige. It's the same man. So when Jesus said, you must be born again, what it means is that the one that was born before it's not good. It's not good. We can't do anything with it. We've got to put it aside. I know it was difficult for Nicodemus. But Nicodemus knew that if this is the way, I better begin to look for this. That was what happened. And so this morning, not just saying, let's do discipleship, discipleship, discipleship. Because even 10 years in discipleship will not change Mr. Flesh to become spirit. Are you hearing me? Something must be replaced. The life we used to have must be uprooted, evacuated, or put to death so that a brand new life. Hallelujah. Now, let me ask one of more questions before I stop. The Corsa people here, let me see your hand up. That's good. That's good. Thank you. What makes you a Corsa? Eh? You are born cousins. Eh? So let me ask you, since when have you been cousin? Eh? Since, since inception, he's been a cousin all along. So growing to be a cousin woman. Eh? Is it a struggle? You just grew to be closer. Because that's what you are. So, 
Let's check this question. Discipleship can only grow what was born. It can only develop it up. It doesn't change nature. You must be born again. That's why, you know, in our discipleship classes, the first thing we expected to do is to sit down properly and get Mr. Flesh out of the way. Only new creation people can be discipled though, in the way of Christ. So let's ask this question. And I don't want us to be too much in haste with a program. If we come to a junction like this and a question is coming again and again, are you born again? Looking at everything honestly. Looking at the fact that the Christianity that you have known so far in terms of, well, I'm, I've been trying to be a Christian, is a cage. The moment you are released from the cage, the cat came out and ran after the rat. You know that there are some of us who sometimes we don't see publicly because we hate the shame. Tell us, are you getting me? We hate the shame. Say, how can people say I'm the one who did this? So let me not do that. I don't want to disgrace myself. Did you understand that? Who is still doing that one? That same man. So, for example, if he now travels to Botswana, where nobody knows him, where no matter what happens, nobody will even know that it happened. What did you discover now? There is something inside of him that says, this is okay. Do you get what I'm talking about? You know, there are times that somebody is able to beat his wife in the bedroom. Eh? But if the wife say, I will tell the pastor, the man went on his knees and said, no, <laughs> no, no, don't do that. You know, 